Let me tell y'all, throughout the six years of this broadcast, we focused in on a lot of bullying. From anti-bullying programs to, to real bullying stories, which is why I created the Stop Bullying Speak Up group on Facebook. If you'd like to join, we have the link in the description below. Y'all can join in. You can share, you can share your stories about when you were bullied, about the time you were bullied, your friend was bullied, your parents were bullied. You guys are welcome to share your stories, and your stories would will be on the show. That's what this whole thing's about, to share your stories and to spread the common sense. Now, back in August 2022, when the 2022-23 school year started, one sheriff decided that for one elementary school, they needed they needed a bullying campaign protecting our community. I mean, anti-bullying campaign. That's what one sheriff did in, during the 2020-2022 school year. That was at the beginning. But now with the 2023-2024 school year coming up in about two months, has, is it really working at the... Oskillia County Schools. Tonight, you're going to meet the sheriff who created that program, speak out to tell, to tell his side of the story about that anti-bullying message. Take a look. Anytime you see someone that is being a victim of a bully, you go out, you talk to them, you tell them, hey, that's not right. The sheriff admits this was an experiment. You. Taking his anti-bullying talk. Nothing can be done at school to reduce bullying. Is that fact or myth? To the smallest of students, elementary schoolers. Anybody tell me what bullying is? Never before had anyone in uniform in school. Only boys bully. Is that a fact or myth? Explained what bullying is and why it's bad. That's right, girls bully too, right? Yep. Until this past school year. You know, I, I believe yes, um, but I'd like I said, I'd like to see further to see to make sure that this is really working. Sheriff Marcos Lopez says parents are grateful, telling him they're not just glad but relieved that school resource officers are finally targeting the youngest students to stop bullying sooner. So many school shooters claim they were bullied as children. Spreading rumors is a form of bullying. Is that a fact or myth? So this type of talk may ultimately prevent school violence, the sheriff believes. But he understands it'll take years to see the real results as the elementary schoolers learning these lessons grow up. And in fact, the official numbers from the Osceola County School District do not show an improvement for now. Last year, before the sheriff brought anti-bullying to elementary schools, most incidents of bullying, harassment, and threats happened in Osceola Middle Schools, 217 last year. Elementary schools were next, with 130 incidents, and high schools had the fewest, only 84 incidents last year. But this year, at least according to the numbers, it got worse amongst our youngest students. Middle schools again had the most, 286 incidents of bullying, harassment, and threats. That's a 33% increase year over year. Elementary schools had 191. That's a 47% increase. Only high schools saw a decrease, just 64 incidents this year, a 31% drop. And the sheriff says to really get the best idea of how well this is working or not here in the schools, he's got to get better stats. So he's working with his deputies here in the schools, the SROs, and the school board to try and characterize incidents that happen here a little bit better. For example, if there's a fist fight, does it stem for bullying? Or is it just two kids who are mad at each other? In Osceola County, Eric Von Aken getting results, News 6. Again, we want to protect our community from this type of some of this type of situation. There's a fact like, from this type of situation. Sorry, for, sorry, I'm talking too fast. But if there's an issue going on, we have to report this right away. That's part of the case in this next story you're about to hear. A Quebec student allegedly bullied at a school for being black. It's called racist bullying, and how it works is someone makes fun of someone because because they're black. Because they're because of their skin. Take a look. Alexandra ordnes Pierre to talk about it. Mama, je plus rien à faire ici. It's hard to hear your child say, Mom, I don't belong here anymore. I don't want to lose my daughter. Ornes Pierre says her 13-year-old daughter is being bullied at school because of the color of her skin. 
She says it's gotten so bad she doesn't want to go to school and has resorted to harming herself. There was some name calling. The N-word was used. Constant harassment. She was being followed uh, between classes after school on the, on the school bus. Um, and, and, and she reported those incidents to the school. Not satisfied with the response from the school, she hopes the Red Coalition can help. In a letter sent last week to Education Minister Bernard Drainville and to Christopher Skeet, the Minister for the Fight Against Racism, the Red Coalition calls on the government to investigate the issue and put measures in place to make sure these kinds of complaints stop. To acknowledge the ongoing systemic racism that's perpetuating inside of the schools, um, this particular incident is, is, is the most shocking out of all the incidents that we've received. It's also demanding a meeting with the school service center. The impact of racism and discrimination seems to be minimized, and, and we want it to be put as serious and as important as any other form of, of violence or bullying in the school system. In a statement, the saint Saint School Service Center says school administrators rigorously apply the procedures, interventions, and usual sanctions. These actions were carried out in line with the school's anti-bullying plan, as well as the school service center's procedure for intervention in situations of bullying or violence. The Red Coalition, meantime, says it's planning on filing a complaint with the Quebec Human Rights Commission. Speaking out, she says, so her daughter can feel safe going to school. Amanda Klein, CTV News. And there's some common sense being raised around here, which we'll explain shortly. Which we'll explain coming up next. Still ahead! Are you feeling the heat this summer? As Texas begins its heat wave, it's safety break this time, and this time, we're talking about the heat wave. But coming up next... My common sense perspective from this report from a Quebec student who was allegedly bullied at school for being black. What else can be done? Some common sense is coming up next, so stay with us. Common sense alert. If you feel like your school is not doing enough to prevent bullying from happening, my common sense perspective is complain about to the superintendent. Remember this, the superintendent is a leader of every school district, not just the principal. The superintendent has the power over the principal. The principals are in charge of the teacher, so they can just fire what they can just fire the teacher or suspend the teacher. Put them on, put them out on pay, whatever. Put them out on pay, or or something like that. But. But when it comes to when it comes to something like this, we have to understand. We can't understand that kids matter and safety matters. When we do stories like this, we care about the community and our kids. So next, so really, what I have to say is next time, if your child is being bullied, you don't know what to do. I mean, talk with the superintendent, talk with your local school board, and they will do something about it. Remember Dangerous Hallways we talked about we talked about earlier this year, or probably last year, last season? Well, in that case, there were three girls. Three of them were being bullied. They reported to their principal, and they did nothing to stop this. Hadn't they said, hadn't they called them in, suspended them, or expelled them, this, then this would never, this here's how it would have happened. Juvenile detention centers. Suspended from school, not just one day. It has to be for remember like two to five days, or ten days out of school suspension. That's the way it should have been. But no, they're like, okay, you're suspended for one day. Then bullying continues. Like I don't know what else to do. Superintendent was all like, it's the language statement. They think they're not doing high on their own purposes, whatever. Okay, but the thing you have to understand here is that. We care about our students. We care about our kids. We care about what's going on. But when you're looking at people who are being picked on or being made fun of, you have to sit there and understand and say to yourself, well, what am I supposed to do? As parents, what you're supposed to do, contact the school board. If you feel like the school board's not doing nothing, 
The final step for you is to hire an attorney and sue the school district. If they want to settle, that's your choice. You want to fight it and say, well, I have evidence right here. This school board did not do anything. My daughter does not lie to me. And if you got to go all the way to cross the line to teach your daughter self-defense, like, what's the move, bitch? What's the motherfucking move, bitch? Something like that. Then that is your choice. But remember, when you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. That's the whole key. It's like, I mean, people are being bullied on social media. People are being bullied on YouTube. And always, people being bullied out in school. You may not remember the Jessica Logan Act. But in that case, everybody, everybody was just probably in chandeliers because of all this. So, what's the moral common sense here? Well, if your child is being bullied, listen to the child. And if you don't, and if they don't believe you, okay. If the school board says they have nothing to do with it, then okay. So, I can tell you, I have not ever been bullied. I never bullied someone. I have been bullied, but I would never, ever bully someone. But if I did, then I would regret it for the rest of my life. That is a line that I will never cross ever again. But if I did, I'd regret it. That's a line that I, will, that I won't cross, and I'll never cross ever again. As long as I live on this planet. And in the great state of Texas and this community here at Bowling Bluff, I will never ever pick on somebody. I will never bully them. Period. As long as I'm here. Alright. Coming up next, there's a heat wave going on here in Texas. We don't know how long it's going to last. But we're going to give you some tips and information that can really help you. It can really help you out here when it comes to this heat wave. Like drinking plenty of water, staying in a cool shade, wearing sunglasses, wearing a hat. We'll give you all those tips when we return. So stay with us. It's gonna get hot. Woo! Is it hot in here? Or is it just me? That's a phrase we all say. There's a heat wave coming from Corpus Christi. And in just a bit short, in a short while, and just in just a few minutes, we're gonna hear from Carly Smith and Chris Dewell and Alan Holt. Because let me tell you, I take those three very seriously when it comes to the weather. This safety break is all about the heat wave. So, what do you do in case of a heat wave? Well, let's look at the two types of differences. You have your heat exhaustion on one side, and on the other side, you have your heat stroke. Let's look at the heat exhaustion here. The heat exhaustion is caused by dizziness, nausea, and weakness. Drink water, move to cooler air condition, or shaded space. The heat stroke of this is confusion, a throbbing headache, and unconsciousness. Now, all you today here in Corpus, we, we hit over 100 degrees because of high pressure. And during the summertime, high pressure can be, can be really hot. That's what makes the hot stuff hot. Low pressure, when it goes to, cool, when it goes to cold fronts, that's when the feel out temperatures drop. So if you're going outside and saying, oh, it's like 80 some degrees, the feel like temperatures are what you gotta look out for. My advice for all you people out there, you're going to the beach, you're going out to the pool, make sure you do these things. Stay cool and hydrated. Bring water with you at all times. Also, bring sunscreen. You don't bring sunscreen and you're going like, ow, it burns, it burns, it burns. Bring the right amount of sunscreen, that would help you out. Sunglasses would help out the great. 
As a matter of fact, I recommend you get the best sunglasses ever. I have these. The Battle Vision Wraparounds. If you have glasses, regular glasses on, these will fit over your glasses. And these are the best these are the best glasses. These are UV protection. Actually, I'm probably giving this to a friend of mine. Give this to a friend of mine. Because it is, it is a great tool to use. So, that's what I recommend. So let's finish looking at this video. As the heat advisory remains in effect, it's important to note signs of heat exhaustion and heat stroke and take the steps to protect yourself and others. According to the CDC, you should drink plenty of water and move to a cooler place if you start to experience those symptoms. Call 911 and use a cool compress if you experience signs of heat stroke. Also, that includes dry red skin. That is just one of the symptoms. You can find a full list of heat safety tips and symptoms to look out for right now at WBIR.com. Which we're going to do for you right now. So let's take a look. Because I go outside a lot. A lot of people I see outside are jogging, walking, whatever. A, and they feel the heat, but they don't have the tips. So let's take a look. This can be a really dangerous time for children and the elderly. It doesn't take long in these conditions to get heat stroke. Alex Crescenti is live in Riverfront Park on what you can do now to prepare for this scorching weather. That's right, Nia. Typically, it takes a little while for people's bodies to adjust to this extremely hot weather, especially coming out of winter. And the first heat wave of the year is always difficult, but especially on children who've been playing sports and have been kept up inside the house for the pandemic. Before heat stroke comes heat exhaustion and cramps. Once you stop sweating and become disoriented, that's when it becomes a serious medical condition. Children are especially vulnerable. What you would think of as a fever, um, their temperature goes up and up and up, but it, it's not like a normal fever. It can get up to 107, 108, 109, just as, as if somebody were locked in a hot car. It's not just children that need to be careful. Even firefighters at Spokane Valley Station 7 had to curb wildfire training this week because of the temperatures. If we're out there training when it's 95, 96 degrees, um, and we're insulting our bodies, we're wearing all of our gear, and we're sweating, right? Uh, we can't be in that top tip form to, one, physically do it, and two, mentally do it. And while many of us enjoy a nice cold one on a hot day, physicians and paramedics urge people to stay away from liquids that will dehydrate you. They say stay away from caffeinated beverages, alcohol, juices, and even coffee. Your best bet is to stick with water and something with electrolytes in it. And don't wait until the day of. Um, so our bodies aren't climatized to this, this heat yet. Um, so for us to start today, we're a little bit behind the power curve. We probably should have started two or three days ago, getting enough water inside of us. Now, Spokane Valley Fire tells me they haven't gone out on any heat-related calls just yet, but this is an issue that does pop up every single year. It just happens to happen a little earlier this year. Reporting live in Riverfront Park, Alex Crescenti, 4 News Now. Now, you might be asking, what electrolytes can I drink? You got Powerade, you got Gatorade. Find drinks that will that are have electrolytes. Water's good, but it all depends on the, on the type of water you get. You got an ice cube, you got ice, you got an ice cooler, fill it up with ice, then get you some cup, fill it up with water, drink along the way. Bottle waters, save up, recycle them. If you recycle those water bottles, you too, which would you too can be safe. As long as you save those water bottles, you throw those away, that's a waste of money. Take a big tip and recycle. Because if you recycle your bottled waters, you can save up your water. These heat levels can have like muscle cramps, heavy sweating, weakness, confusion, nausea, vomiting, fast or weak pulse, and fainting. Take a look. And let me tell you, I am always out. When I'm always out, I have hydration with me at all times. No joke and no excuse.
Signs of heat-related illness. Dr. Max Gomez is here with the answer. Dr. Max. Well, that's right. You know, even though heat-related illness is less common these days because there are many public places with air conditioning, the CDC says there are still an average of more than 600 heat-related deaths nationally and many more heat illnesses every year. Heat illness comes in a couple of types and escalating severity, but by far the most common is heat exhaustion. Now, the first sign of heat problem is muscle cramps. That's a warning sign that you could be headed for trouble and there's very heavy sweating confusion nausea or vomiting a fast or weak pulse and weakness or fainting if you stop sweating and your skin gets hot and red you could be on your way to a heat stroke that's a true medical emergency at the first sign of any of these symptoms though move to a cooler location immediately lie down and apply cool wet cloths to as much of your um, as much of your body as possible and of course drink water but if your skin gets hot and dry, you're vomiting, or your body temp is getting above 103, get to an emergency room immediately. And of course, the most important way to stay safe in the heat is to drink plenty of water. If your urine isn't clear or pale yellow, you need more fluids. That's the best way to tell whether you're hydrated or not. Get inside. Well, that's the conditioning. Yes, that's the air conditioning and water works for me. Some Absolutely. very important tips. Thank you, Dr. You Max. And those are in very important tips. If you fail to follow those tips, you're dead. You could be at, you could be losing heat. So there are these coolant centers here at Corpus Christi that could really help out. If you're planning on visiting those, that's great. Get out when I mean, you're going out visiting these coolant centers. That's great. It's gonna be even hotter into the weekend. So we're gonna be going to. Uh, into much but these but the Corpus Christi emergency rooms are see are seeing uptick in it here in these heat related instances at these ERs so so how much of it do we really know here's Brandon Shaft hey Brandon Hey, good evening, Leslie and Bill, and you guys got it exactly right there. Both Nueces County ESD2 and Corpus Christi Medical Center say that there's been an increase in heat-related illnesses. Well, while they say that that's normal for this time of year, to see temperatures like this before the late summer is catching many off guard. Here we are, and you know, in June, it's kind of already hit us, so I do believe it's caught some people by surprise. Um, so that's why we, you know, we're just trying to stay as ready as possible that way, you know, we can be ready to go. Ronnie Vegas said Nueces County ESD2 is preparing units with equipment for the heat. That means water, ice packs, and making sure they stay hydrated and ready to respond to calls. Since they respond to calls on Pottery Island, he said it's common for them to treat people with heat-related illnesses that weren't prepared for the extreme temperatures during their visit. They're not familiar with the temperatures that we have down here in South Texas, so that's definitely a, a, something common. We just try to inform them, just like everybody else, you know, what to expect. PSD2 has one ambulance ready to respond to heat emergencies. He said some people can be treated at the scene with fluids and ice, allowing them to cool down. But for more extreme cases, they are transported to the hospital. At Corpus Christi Medical Center, doctors say they are seeing about one to two cases per day of heat-related illnesses. We are noticing an increase in the volume of, of this uh, heat exhaustions. And again, uh, everybody is in summer now, uh, having parties in the pool, enjoying in the beach. Dr. Ramirez said alcohol is often a factor when people get sick from the heat since it dehydrates people quicker. He said heat exhaustion is the most common heat-related illness, and there are symptoms to look out for, like sweating and nausea. If it gets worse, it can lead to heat stroke, when a high body temperature for a long time can compromise vital organs and send people to the hospital. But Dr. Ramirez said there is a way to stay safe in the heat. You need to keep hydrated. Uh, that means that you need to be drinking water. Uh, that's number one. Number two, try to get into a chain every, every few hours or get into a cool RS. And health experts also say to remember to take breaks from the sun, especially if you're working outside all day. Also make sure to not leave any one or any pets inside cars since they can reach some dangerously high temperatures as we have covered many times here when those cars turn off. Leslie, Bill, back to you guys. Yeah. And also do not leave your kids in the car. 
That's how you can be arrested for child neglect. Like we talked about. This year, this season, we talked about child neglect and child and talked about child neglect. Where people leave their kids in the car. If you do so, you can be arrested for neglect. So, for this tip, for, for this video, common sense alert. If you don't know what the temperatures are, watch the weather. You need to keep you need to keep you need to keep your eyes glued to the weather at all times. If you're at work, you're at the house, watch the weather. Look at this. I take I take Alan Holt, Carly Smith. And Kristen Waller very seriously. I watch them every day. That's how seriously I take them. If it's hot, if it's too windy, I got to take them very seriously. Start hydrating up. Avoid caffeine drinks. Avoid drinks like this. And drink some stuff like this. This will get you hydrated enough. And it can help you. Electrolyte drinks, Powerades, Gatorades, those are all helpful. They are helpful to you. They are helpful to everybody. Do not, I mean, stock up. You should have gotten stocked up last, before the summer. Next time there's heat wave coming, you need to stock up on water and electrolytes. Cold tea is coming around. Stock up. Stock up on everything. You got hot chocolate? You want to make hot chocolate? Well, stock up on some cocoa powder. Stock up on some milk, cream, whatever you, whatever. What cream, marshmallows, whatever floats the boat here. Make sure you are prepared when the next cold front comes and when, the, when there's a next big freeze. That's possible. And if you're going to any public pools or whatever, make sure make sure you know this. Make sure you stay hydrated. Make sure, I mean, cooling centers are always open. Find a cooling center near you here at Corpus Christi and you can stay as cool as ever. That's it for safety break. I promise you in the near future, we'll, we'll have more safety break for you when, when I find something. So we're going to look out for that. Coming up next, legendary host Pat Sajak announced he is leaving Wheel of Fortune. Who do I think should be replaced? Will it be Ken Jennings? I mean, we already know Vanna White hosted back in 2019 when Pat Sajak had surgery. But could she be replaced? Or could somebody else fill in, fill in the gap? It could be Steve Harvey. It could be Drew Carey. It could be... It, it could be... Alfonso Ribeiro or Tom Bergeron. We probably won't know. I'll give you my take. Stay with us. Welcome back. Are you a huge Wheel of Fortune fan? Well, if you if you are, if you read social media today, media today, you might have heard the news. Legendary host Pat Sajak is retiring after, after season forty one. He is retiring. Now, if you don't remember, it was back in 2019 when Pat Sajak went to surgery and Vanna White filled in for him while he was recovering from surgery. But there is some great news out there. If you're in the Corpus Christi area and you would really like to drive a Wheel of Fortune, it's coming to Corpus Christi. Don't believe me? Take a look. Fortune legend Pat Sajak may be spinning the wheel one last time. The host announced last night that he is retiring next year. But if you are a fan, you have a chance to get on the show. They are bringing America's Game right here to Corpus Christi. It's the game show is being adapted into a stage show to give more fans access and more chances to win. Contestants are selected from the audience to go on stage, to call consonants, buy vowels, and maybe even solve puzzles to win big. 
Wheel of Fortune Live will be coming to the American Bank Center Selena Auditorium on Saturday, December 23rd. Tickets, though, are going to go on sale this Friday. And I do have to shout out our producer, Kristen, because she and her grandmother, turns out, are Wheel of Fortune, not just fans, but pros. They oh, get wow. the, they guess right often. Well, I like playing the Wheel of Fortune slot machines. Oh, yeah? So <laughs> Pro there. So you should try it out, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe so. Y'all think I could try out? Well, if you think I have a chance to try out, let's play some wheel. It's going to be a give me a break first. I take this show very seriously, but hey, what do you say we have some fun around here? That's exactly what we're going to do. When we come back, we're going to play some Wheel of Fortune. And you may see how well I do. Stay with us. Are you ready to play some Wheel of Fortune? Well, if you just joined us, Pat Sajak yesterday, a few days, a couple days ago, announced he's retiring after 41 seasons. So the question is, do I have what it takes to be a contestant Wheel of Fortune? We're about to find out. And it's a give me a break first. So hold your horses, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Thanes always has an S. It sounds like you're ready to solve. Go ahead. We don't want to keep our contestants waiting any longer, so let's start the game. I think it's time to start this round. The category is, what are you doing? Contestant number one, go ahead and take the first spin.
just didn't make it this time. I'm sorry. You try to guess this puzzle? That's alright though. I did try. I did try with the toss up puzzles, but I can still play. But I can still be qualified to play. If you're planning on doing this, like Leslie said, tickets go on sale this Friday. And you may have a shot at this. I mean, like you saw, I might be almost a huge fan, so I have this. But all of those fails, I still have this. I don't plan on using this, but I will. I play the Wheel of Fortune video games. I watch the full episodes on YouTube. And let me tell you. It is still the best game show ever. Top of the line with Jeopardy. Now, now that Pat Sajak is leaving after season 41, who is gonna who who I think is gonna be the new host? We well, already know Ken Jennings is doing this, but what about other people who would host the game shows? I'll give you my take when we come back. Stay with us. You know, it's almost it's been it's been almost one year and one month since that horrible incident at Uvalde, Texas. You probably may not realize this, but you probably not heard of Alyssa's law. Governor Greg, there's now a new standard in Texas schools. That's Alyssa's law. That comes after the horrific shooting in Parkland. That's Alyssa's law. Take a look. Abbott has publicly signed Alyssa's Law, which requires public school districts and open enrollment charter schools to put silent panic alert buttons in every classroom. The law named after a 14-year-old student who was killed after a mass shooting at a school in Parkland, Florida. Our Ashley Gonzalez is here, and Ashley, you found out that at least one local school district already has these panic buttons. That's right. CCISD is one of the biggest school districts in our area, with well over a dozen schools. CCISD Police Chief Kirby Warnke says each of their classrooms already have a panic button. He says this is how it works. Each classroom in every school has a phone. It's the one teachers and staff use to reach the front office or anyone. On that phone, there's a small panic button in case of any emergency. It's a way to communicate out of the classroom to administration and law enforcement. So for us, um, if they hit the panic button, my dispatch gets notified, the front office at the campus gets notified, and my office at my headquarters, and the phone goes off. He says CCISD classrooms have had a panic button for several years now, and it's been used 
several times. You have a medical issue going on inside the camp classroom or something, and you can get law enforcement uh, first responders there real quick. But we have police on campus. It's usually pretty quick. If nothing else, we'll try to call back. Uh, probably the majority of them are accidental. Um, but you know what? They test us. And so we're going to come every time. As for the schools that do not have a panic button in classrooms, well, it'll be a standard now, so schools will have to get them soon. CCISD is also looking at adding 33 more police officers to their campuses to add to safety protocols. Leslie, Bill? Thank you for that report. Now, Governor... I think that's good. He signed, he signed the law, so... He signed the law, so those laws can't go on. What about other schools? We don't know yet, so, so that could be a first. Earlier, a few moments ago, I played Wheel of Fortune for y'all to see, see if I would qualify. Well, as it turns out, I could qualify by solving problems and solving the puzzle. By Naval, spinning wheel, solve the puzzle. I play the Wheel of Fortune video games. And I know now that, hey, I can be qualified to play Wheel of Fortune. If you're playing on newness, again, tickets go on sale this Friday if you guys are planning. And I'm thinking about doing that. I don't know. But we'll see. Now, Pat Sager's, Pat Sager is retiring after season 41. So who do I think is going to be the new host? Well, if you remember back in 2019 or 2020 when Pat Sager had surgery, Vanna White had to replace him. Well, he was resting, and so there were some re there were some people who 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 uh, helped out with the puzzle board. There was Minnie Mouse, and there was Pat Sajak's daughter Maggie Sajak, who did absolutely stunning, very good. Now Pat Sajak hosted after Chuck Woolley left for over forty seasons, for forty seasons. Now it's Pat's final season at season forty first. And the question is, who's going to be the new host? Well, we only know that Steve Harvey hosted fam hosts Family Feud and is still hosting to this day. Drew Carey hosted back in 2008 and is still hosting to this day. Ken Jennings is the great host for Jeopardy. I mean, he was a contestant long before, long before the host. He was a great contestant. What's Your Name Plays Amy hosted, hosted Celebrity Jeopardy. And, um... So, well, we so we so I think she be she she should be qualified to host, but then there's Tom Bergeron. If y'all don't remember, you may be thinking, oh, he hosted AFB. What do you mean he, could, he hosted AFB? That's Mr. Tom. We think he could be qualified. Well, he is funny. I mean, you know he hosted America's Funniest Videos. But what you did not know is that he hosted. He's he filled in for Meredith Vieira on Millionaire. Along with Steve Harvey. That's what you didn't know. So, my two guesses come to this. It's either Tom Bergeron or the girl who plays Amy in The Big Bang Theory. Or it could be Kane Jennings. He could do, could do uh, two, two shows. But, um... We, we don't know. So, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens. So, that could be a good start. That could be a great start. Or Van White could host again, and Maggie could do the same thing. It's a two, it's a two to three case scenario, depending on how you look at it. Now, now, earlier, just a few months ago, we talked about the dangerous heat. This heat wave that's happening here at Corpus. It's going to continue on and on. I wasn't going to show you some Alan Hole and Crystal Walla, but then my back of my mind thought, I don't want to throw them in jeopardy. So, I decided, you know what? You no, can't be doing that.
But with the heat coming, how will it affect all the homeless people we see out there? Because you see homeless people that are trying to get some water and hydration. But the question you have to ask yourself is, what can I do to help out the homeless people who are struggling with the heat? Here's Michelle Lorenzo. Summer-like weather might be fun in the sun for people on vacation, but there's nothing fun about it for those experiencing homelessness, like Jennifer. Sure enough, it's hot. It's too hot. I met her at South Bluff Park as she was trying to beat the heat. Try to in the shade, you know. Jennifer has been experiencing homelessness for more than 10 years and says the high temperatures aren't the only type of severe weather she and other homeless individuals have to adapt to in the coastal Bend. The last time when uh, the hurricane hit, corporate corner, like, it was all when the tower went out. Yeah, I was out here when it was all raining. Yeah, it was raining. Was, what did you do? I had to say cut work. I said, try to say cut work with no rain. There are locals like Marilena Garza who have compassion and try to help in any way they can. A lot of these people have underlying health conditions, and the heat really does impact that. Garza is the founder of the nonprofit Free Store Corpus Christi, which helps people get essential items like clothing, food, and hygiene supplies. And when it's hot, she helps distribute water. On Father's Day, Garza also plans to hold an event for people in need. We will have our family picnic, and it's just like a picnic. We've got kids running around having fun and music playing. We set up our free store, and we allow shoppers to come and shop and get the things that they need and, of course, talk to us and hopefully get us a better perspective perspective of what they're going through. And as someone who also experienced homelessness in the past, Garza believes more needs to be done to help the less fortunate. Things that I would really love to see here in Corpus Christi is a low barrier shelter op uh, option, free showers, free restrooms, and striking down some of these inhumane ordinances that the city has, like the right-of-way ordinance and the Bleacher Park ordinance. Meanwhile, Garza says there are plenty of ways community members can help the less fortunate. You'll find that information on our website, ChrisTV.com, later this evening. But for now, Garza said kind words and acknowledgement can also go a long way. Reporting from the studio, Michelle Lorenzo, Chris X News. All right. Now, what's the common sense perspective about this? Actually, there is none. If you see a homeless person out there dying of hydration, seeing the shame, just give them some water. You got some extra water in your backpack? Give it to them. That's random acts of kindness. Don't just walk away. Just give them the water. Have, they'll say thank you. And then just be on your way. That's helping people out. I mean, for Michelle Lorenzo, I helped her out by free, by telling me she's... I'm not going to... I'm not going to talk about her, but... Nah, fuck it. I'm going to say fuck it just let it happen. Um... I told her, it's your body, your choice. I told her this. Do the right thing. Do what you think is right. And do the right thing. That's all that matters. That's my saying. Actually, that was, Bat that was Alfred's saying from Batman Arkham, Arkham Knight. I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. Ever. So remember this. Help out. Help me. Help you. That's common sense. And you're saying, You quote that damn it guy on me, boy? I'm coming over there and kick your ways. That's why I'm calling Jeremy McGuire. You got a problem with that? Come at me, blow. <laughs> Sorry about that. Come at me, blow. But I take this show seriously sometimes, and it can be funny most of the times. But, now nah, what the hell. It's my show, I'll do it the way I want. We'll be right back. It's time for a viral break. Now, do you remember the show, you remember the show America's Funniest Home Videos? Well, 17 years ago, 17 years ago, this is true. 17 years ago, 
This was in March 19, 2006, during Tom Bergeron's hosting, that they decided a satire of AF, AVF, America's Funniest Videos, a parody of Lane Pratt Falls and Goose had seen to be staged, so it's like America's Funniest Bloopers. Now, that this is when the channel... This was from the channel called Nults. This was posted on March 19th, and it got 17.4 million views. So, like the video said, It's time for AF! see the real deal here. I mean, you're going to copy off AF? You're going to copy America's Funniest Home Videos? I mean, I just recently came, like, I think it was a year or two ago, I came across a, a flower or something happened here in the bluff. Uh, it was on, it was on AF, AFV. It was on a freaking Hulu or something. But you're going to freaking parody AFV? I love it! Hell, I was born when Bob Saget was still the host and then it was Daisy Frentes and John Fugelsang. Then it was Tom Burge, but now we got Alfonso Ribeiro, who did um, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and was also dancing with the stars. So, that was a parody. This is the real deal. I'm very worried about the next move. <laughs> you see? That's the real deal here. The other one, that was staged. And the video, and, the vi and that video, the other video, claimed that it was staged. It's like, amen! Hallelujah, baby! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's like, oh dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ Almighty, Thank God! Hallelujah! Free at last, baby! That's the way it goes. You don't freaking parody all something you don't know. They can come in and attack you with lawsuits. Try to understand. You want to make parodies and make fun? I mean... Hmm. Parody the Psycho series. No remember my Jugger Nuggets? Jesse Tyler Ridgeway? 
11 years ago, well, all, 10 years ago, he created the Psycho Series. Now, if you don't know what the Psycho Series is, it's fake videos that, par it, was all, it was a parody of Waffle Pond, who'd always take off his shirt when he get freaked out. So he did a parody of that, it continued on until 2016. And there was another Psycho Zero. Like, I mean, you got Jesse Ridgeway, who was a Psycho Kid, Jeff, who was Psycho Dad, Terry, who was Psycho, Psycho Mother, you have the Psycho Girlfriend, who was Kate and Juliet, and Ashley. Then you got Jeffrey, Jeff, JT, who was the Psycho Brother. Boom, boom. Now, we're not going to go all... I, we're not going to just throw Big Dragons in the bus. He's one of my favorite YouTubers, by the way. The greatest ever, so... Shout out to y'all. Big Brother just got married, and... <laughs> I, I'm happy for them. I'm happy for him and his, him and his wife. Okay. Okay. When I come back, I'll look at Throwback Thursday. Stay with us. Coming up on Throwback Thursday, teachers yelling at students and students yelling at teachers. Plus, you are going to meet Dr. Ronald Davidson. And you will see firsthand at a youth center designed for juveniles. And we also answered, and the question that was answered, do you put kids in prison or juvenile correction centers? Or do something else? Private corporations. Here's a preview. Jonesboro. Children. Accused of killing children. What do you do with such troubled kids? Some states now use private for-profit programs to treat children who commit crimes. He calls that the real crime. I would also call the uh, interstate trafficking in children for profit. He says this private youth center was overrun by gangs, violence, and rapists. And a former staffer says those in charge didn't care. They didn't want to know what was happening in those rooms at night. They were afraid to know. Chris Hansen with Children, Crime, and Hard Time. That's tomorrow on Throwback Thursday. So be sure to look for those stories. Look for those stories on our Throwback Thursday on the GMB YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed or post notifications turned on, you need to do so. Because I've watched the story several times, believe me. The question is being asked do you put them in prison or do you know correct sinners or do something else? That's the question to be that's the question to be raised. So, with that in mind, that's give me a break for this Wednesday going to Thursday. We'll see you again for a give me a break throwback Thursday. Or throw out your back Thursday. For everyone here at YouTube, stop bullying, speak up. Have a good night.